Welcome to Biblical Foundations, a podcast of the Center for Biblical Studies at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Rowe, along with Dr. Andreas Kostenberger. Join us as we discuss issues in biblical scholarship for the church. Thank you for joining us today at Biblical Foundations. Here with me is Dr. Andreas Kostenberger. Today we're discussing the subject of Jesus and the Gospels. Dr. Kostenberger, you have a new book titled The Jesus of the Gospels, an introduction published by Craigle, which releases in March. Uh, now, you've published several books on Jesus already. I'm thinking about the first days of Jesus and the final days of Jesus, published by Crossway. Why did you choose to write another book on Jesus, and what is the aim of your book? Yes, Jimmy, thanks so much for engaging with me in this conversation of my latest book on Jesus. And and yes, you're asking some great questions. Uh, you're right, there are sure lots of books on Jesus already on the market. Uh, hundreds, if not thousands of them, I'm sure. So why do we need another book on Jesus? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, when I, I had both a son and a daughter in college, I was looking for a good book I could recommend to them that they could use as a sort of companion as, as they read through the Gospels. And to my amazement, I, I just couldn't come up with a single book that I felt was well suited for that purpose. There are books that were uh, popular, didn't have much depth, and then there were others that were more academic, uh, seminary level treatments. But what I was looking for, uh, for them and for others in their age group, was a thorough but, but jargon-free introduction to each of the four Gospels with a focus on growing in their relationship with Jesus. So eventually I concluded that book that I was looking for didn't exist. Mm. And so with some trepidation, I, I set out to write such a book. And I, I say with some trepidation because writing a book on Jesus and um, you know, all four Gospels is, is not an easy task. And um, in fact, covering all four Gospels in some depth is, is rather ambitious. And yet I was convinced that this book needed to be written because you know, what could be more important than helping people, especially young people, uh, grow in their relationship with Jesus? And you know, let me say one more thing. I've, I've noticed that in our college and seminary uh, curricula, and um, sometimes even in our churches, we often neglect Jesus, which I'm sure is, is, is entirely unintentional. Uh, there may be a New Testament survey course where we cover the Gospels, but the focus is often on the New Testament letters, and, and here especially Paul. You know, I, I do most of my teaching on the doctoral level, and uh, I don't think I've ever encountered a PhD seminar on Jesus and the Gospels. Uh, so in my experience at least, we typically spent... Uh, little time reflecting directly on Jesus, which is ironic, even tragic. I think it's ironic because uh, Jesus is central to our faith, and it's tragic because we can learn a great deal by reading the Gospels reflectively and intelligently in our quest to learn from Jesus and to grow in Him. In uh, chapter one, you situate your book in relation to the history of historical Jesus research. And uh, you discuss figures such as Albert Schweitzer and David Friedrich Strauss. And on page 22, you state that rather than embarking on a quest for the Jesus of history, we should engage in a study of the Jesus of the Gospels. What do you mean by this? Another great question, uh, Jamie. I, I think, you know, when it comes to scholars, as I was working on the book, I gradually came to realize that for the most part, uh, scholars have if anything, driven a wedge between ordinary Bible readers and the Gospels and Jesus. Uh, rather than helping us understand the Gospels better, I feel like often what scholars have done is put an obstacle course up of critical questions so that even anyone writing a book on Jesus feels like they have to justify how you can even... Uh, hope to encounter Jesus by, by reading the Gospels. So when you look at the history of historical Jesus research, which, as you mentioned, where I start the book in, in chapter one, uh, 
uh, you find that often the approach is to investigate whether or not a given event in the life of Jesus or something he said was likely historical. Uh, the 19th century in particular uh, witnessed the pro proliferation of many so-called lives of Jesus that were essentially a sort of harmony or a joint presentation of all four Gospels in order to reconstruct Jesus' life in chronological order. The way you want my write a biography of, of George Washington or Martin Luther King Jr., for example. Now, this may seem to be sensible, but the problem with this approach is that God chose not to give us one single life of Jesus. He gave us four Gospels. And so, uh, as I uh, reflected on how to best write a book about uh, Jesus and uh, on the four Gospels, it occurred to me that the last thing that I wanted to do is to create a fifth Gospel, in effect. So, um, I believe the entire quest of the historical Jesus approach, as it has come to be known, is fundamentally misguided. Instead, uh, I've come to conclude that what's called for is a close study of the narratives of each of the four Gospels to see how their respective portraits of Jesus complement one another. In the ancient world, and also in the Old Testament, uh, it was required that there be at least two or three witnesses to corroborate a given event. And I, I think to this day, in, 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 a, in a legal case, uh, you, you are looking for, for multiple witnesses to, to corroborate a given piece of information. Now, in the Bible, God has given us not two or even three, but four Gospels, an abundance of information and uh, eyewitness material. So we can know Jesus in good authority on the basis of the accounts of the people who do him best. I think that's uh, helpful to think about um, how we can think about the whole subject of the Gospels and the uh, in light of that, how would you recommend we approach reading the Gospels? Well, first, um, read them as direct or indirect eyewitness testimony. That is, have confidence that a given Gospel was written either by someone who knew Jesus firsthand and therefore could attest to the things Jesus said and did with the authority that is unique to eyewitnesses. Of course, that would include Matthew and John. Or uh, read the Gospels as written by someone close to the time who based their account on apostolic eyewitness testimony, which would be the case with Mark or Luke. So all four evangelists wrote within the living memory of Jesus at a time when there were still living eyewitnesses who could corroborate or potentially contradict the information they included in their Gospels. So first, read the Gospels as eyewitness testimony. Secondly, uh, read the Gospels vertically. That is, read each of them in their own right. That involves tracking with their narrative and taking note of any unique features such as their plot, uh, characterization, structure, arrangement, and theological emphases. That's a very important insight from much recent work on the literary integrity of a given work and on the importance of discourse as the primary context. I think what you find is that many are accustomed to jump around from one gospel to another. And if you ask them where they can find a particular event or teaching in Jesus' ministry, it often be hard pressed to tell you. But I would argue that such a horizontal reading, as it's commonly called, where you keep going back and forth between the different Gospels, should only be done after we first come to appreciate the unique contribution of each Gospel individually. So an important intention underlying my book is to help students of Scripture to appreciate the unique contribution each of the Gospel narratives makes our knowledge of Jesus as a whole. Thank you for joining us today at Biblical Foundations. For more information, please visit the Center for Biblical Studies at Midwestern at cbs.mbts.edu.
For further resources, please also visit biblicalfoundations.org. Please join us again next time at the Biblical Foundations Podcast.